Mm. Boom! Greetings all! And welcome! And Happy New Year! I forgot! Last Outrider here with the next part of Who Are Gene Stealers? And we're going to go on to The Cult of War. From the moment the first hybrid is born, the cult begins preparing for a world-spanning war of insurrection. There are other factors that can trigger a large-scale military intervention, sometimes before the dynasty reaches the critical mass it has planned for. Woe betide those who derail the cult's master plan, for its warriors strike serpent-fast, and their vengeance is terrible. Gene Stealer cults are concerned with their own propagation above all else, and will usually only commit to an armed action on its own terms. There remain exceptions, of course, for in the crumbling edifice of the Imperium, even the most watertight plans do not last long in practice. Such ruction, setback, or disaster is handled in its own fashion. On occasion, an incautious power grab or roving aberrant may lead the cult being investigated by imperial authorities. If an inquest from the Adeptus Arbites, or worse still, the Inquisition cannot be dealt with by a visit from the Magus or his minions, the cult may soon find itself under attack by anything from a regiment of Militarum Tempestis soldiers to a strike force of Death Watch Space Marines. Though this caliber of attack can eradicate a Gene Stealer cult in a scouring that shakes the underworld to its core, all it takes is for one Tyranid life form to escape, and the cult can begin anew. The cult's primus, being a war leader, has more aggressive approach to the propagation of his kin. He will gather a hand-picked army from the parent cult, and then strike out to claim new worlds in the name of the patriarch. Often, this is done under the guise of industry, making use of existing space lanes and import routes to carry a host of gene-stealer cultists to a new planet. In the darkness of the cargo holds, shipment autocrates will hiss open, and the Primus will lead his brethren forth. Should their incursion be uncovered, the cult will strike with swift and overwhelming force. If their assault does not take down their new adversaries in short order, they will scatter like oil roaches in the torchlight, seeking shelter in the dank corners of their new domain before later regrouping. There are times when a host planet is attacked by outside forces, perhaps the target of a Hrud migration, a Xenos pirate raid, a greenskin wag, or even a warp breach. Most cults, nestled in hiding, will be content to wait for the storm to pass. But if the invasion directly threatens their interests, they will fight like a hive of angered hornets to defend them. Such planets teeter on the brink of catastrophe, rescued from one alien war host, only to find their saviors embody another, far more sinister threat. Should all go well, the cult will wait with the patience of spiders for their moment, generation after generation spent in preparation for the final battle as they infest ever more territory. Once all is in order, the intricate web of secrecy is finally torn away, and the world is plunged 
into anarchy. Now for a little side story. Ah, Gosar Quintus. The first confirmed imperial engagement with a gene stealer cult occurred upon the mining colony of Gosar Quintus in the year 680 of the 41st millennium. Investigating what happened to be a perversion of the imperial creed, Inquisitor Hygrin led a team of Tempestus scions to the Gosar Quintus and ventured into the depths of the Great Pit. The deeper Hygrin ventured, the more evidence of deviance he found. Strangely, though, his last communique stated that all was well and that the Trist dynasty should be left to its own devices. It was a full year before Hygrin's infestation by the gene stealer cult was discovered and the insurrection dealt with. So there you go. Let's see what happens next, you might ask. We have a whole lot talking about the... Ah, Next time we're going to talk about gene stealer cults of the Imperium. There are apparently a number of well-established cults already traveling through the Imperium. If the High Lords of Terra truly comprehended the number of gene stealer cults abroad in their realm, they would feel a chill of fresh terror creep across their souls. Though only six cults have been codified by the Ordo Xenos, Data harvests taken from the Gosar Quintus imply that the presence of hundreds, perhaps thousands, of gene stealer cults exist in the Ultima Segmentum alone, which is kind of scary. So, once again, this will lead to the credence that eventually this galaxy belongs to the Tyranids. Okay. I mean, can you even imagine thousands of gene stealer cults just in one segmentum? And as they keep repeating, if even one Tyranid organism survives, the cult continues. So, <laughs> thousands of cultists, cults in one segmentum, what are the chances? of wiping out gene stealer cults, just the gene stealer cults, put aside the entire Tyranid hive fleets. The Imperium probably couldn't even deal with just the gene stealers by themselves if they were a standalone threat. That's just my opinion. But we'll wait for the new codex to come out. And I believe the new Tyranid narrative campaign will be coming out after the uh, the new one that was supposed to come out on Christmas, I thought. Uh, but, but that, I believe, will tell us a lot more about Tyranid thinking. Until next time, bye.